Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Tammy, the creator of the blog and this YouTube channel called Nutmeg Notebook. And this is where I share with you all about a whole food plant-based lifestyle. We decided just to go live this morning to um, show you how I batch prep salads. So that is something that I do weekly. I do it on the weekend and I make 14 salads for the week. Seven for my husband Tom, seven for myself. We each eat a salad every day as, as a main dish. And that is something we've been doing since 2013. And it is a habit that I was encouraged to do by Dr. Joel Furman. It's something that he um, advocates for. It's a great way to get in a lot of greens and other raw vegetables. And uh, it's just a super healthy habit to establish. So um, uh, to get started, first I want to thank everyone for being here. You can ask questions in the chat feed and if you would just preface those with four question marks followed by four question marks. My husband Tom is moderating. Do you want to put yourself up? <laughs> Hello everybody. I'm, I'm, in the, I'm on the Reeves cam. I call this the Reeves cam. <laughs> Because Reeves hangs out on Dylan's show up in the little square. Right, absolutely. So, yeah, and this way I get to be able to look down and see everything that's going on. Perfect. Over here. So I'm. But go ahead. I've got, I have my iPad set up here so I yeah. can be watching the chat. But if you have, I'll get busy chatting. I and might I'll alert forget. you that there's something to read over there. Yeah, so yeah. he'll let me know if there's any questions. And feel free to ask me questions because. Um, you, those of you who follow us, uh, you know that we just released our new vegan salad dressing recipe and it is no oil, no nuts. Um, it does use soy, but I have an option if you can't have soy and it's absolutely delicious and I'm hoping that it encourages you to eat more salads. The biggest complaint we get from people who are new to a whole food plant exclusive lifestyle is what do you use for a salad dressing? So I have a very popular vegan ranch dressing that we released a few weeks ago. I actually worked on it for a year and got it absolutely perfect. And now we have the vegan um, Caesar dressing and I just made a batch of it and Tom said oh don't I was gonna go ahead and put it in my container and get it in the fridge and he said oh don't do that pour it on camera so people can see because it's so fun to see that happen so it's very easy to make it takes like 10 minutes to make this dressing and it is absolutely amazing I don't know if they can see it we didn't do an overhead cam today did we Tom um, no. we could have though uh, but anyway, this is what it looks like, and um, we, we absolutely Here, love it. it. And between this and the ranch dressing, we do find ourselves just enjoying our salads so much more. And we, we enjoyed them before, otherwise we wouldn't have been eating them daily uh, for the last eight years, since 2013. Yeah, eight years. So... Anyway, I'm going to um, go ahead and you can see how thick and creamy this is. It's just, it's absolutely amazing. And it smells incredible. And it will fill this container. Wonderful. There's just a little bit left in here, and I'm going to taste it. And I learned this from um, chef, my friend, Chef AJ, uh, professional chefs, so that they don't have to keep using spoons. They just put a little bit here on their hand, and then they lick it. Mm. You guys, it is, it's so good. So good, so creamy. I hope you'll make it today. It's absolutely wonderful. And um, I think you're going to love it as much as I do. Oh, there's a little drip there. I have to lick that. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to pop this in my fridge so that it can start chilling. And you can see I've done a little bit of batch prep already. I've got potatoes already made. There was one salad left from last week 
and I'm actually going to chop that for you in a little bit and show you what I do. So I will say if you're the plastic police, probably you should just leave right now because you won't appreciate that I bought stuff that comes in plastic bags. But that's just how I'm able to do this and be able to make my salads in, um, in a short amount of time. And so that's just what I do. Okay, so we're going to go through the ingredients, but first I need to slice my, um, my onions, and I had already put one cut on that. So I use red onions in my salad. The vegetables that have more color, so that like the difference between a red onion and a white onion or a yellow onion, the more pigment it has, the more antioxidants it has. So if you have your choice between a red onion and a yellow onion, choose the red onion. And if you have the choice between um, regular cabbage or red cabbage, choose the red cabbage. And now I know there's some recipes that a red onion is just not going to look good in. And I use yellow onions in recipes as well. But for my salads, I go with the, the red onion. And it usually takes like two. And the onions have been kind of small lately, but hopefully we'll be getting some bigger. Oh, and I have my wastebasket. I always put my wastebasket beside me in the kitchen so that I don't have to keep running. Mine goes under the sink and I don't want to have to keep running over there. Some people do the Rachel Ray garbage bowl and have that on the counter with them. And you could do that as well. But as you can see, my counter is quite full when I'm making the salad, so I don't have room for that. And just, if the red, if the red onions came pre-sliced, I'd probably buy them that way too. It's not my favorite thing to have to do. And this um, skin is being tough on this particular one. Tom said, oh, I was gonna pre-cut the onion. He said, oh no, do it on the show. It's fun. I said, oh, it makes me nervous to cut in front of people because I don't have excellent well, knife skills. Well, that was because it was showtime. And <laughs> you were just trying to get me on live. Yeah, I said on uh, the Facebook post that we were going to probably go around 9.15 or I set it up on YouTube to start at 9.15 and then she said on Instagram 9.30. So I think it was probably closer to 9.30 before we got yeah, actually pushed, I think it the, was closer. pushed the send button. So... You know, there's always getting the last minute microphone on and changing the batteries in the microphone so they don't die on you guys in the middle of a sentence. Right. So, anyway, um, yeah. So, okay. I'm, uh, oh, I wanted to ask um, Randy, uh, anybody else, how's the sound? It seemed a little loud uh, when we first started, so I did turn it down a little bit. I want to make sure we're good with that. So, I don't want to be blowing people's speakers out. So, usually on YouTube, it's the reverse. People can't hear people, but. Uh, with this rig we have, sometimes the sound is too loud and it gets all scratchy. Okay, so I'm just getting my onions sliced here. So good morning, everybody. Gosh, it's so good to see everybody here. Nice. And are you guys batch prepping today? I would like to know that. You said Randy was, right? Yeah, Randy said she was going to be oh, Randy batch. says sound is good, so I won't mess with it anymore. Okay, great. And JL's here that was, uh, I think JL was on our premiere we did last night. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's great. So um, a couple people have already made the Caesar dressing and have um, emailed us to tell us how much they like it. We did debut it on an Amazon Live. We do some Amazon Lives where we um, do product reviews, and we did make it a couple weeks ago on our Amazon live. So a few people already had that recipe um, before the actual video went up on YouTube yesterday. So here we go. One other half to go. And if I have extra onion left over, I'm always happy because then I have it to put in the fridge to use for sauteing or recipe or whatever I decide to do with it. And I'm also going to talk to you guys about how um, we can 
use C. There, I almost cut hey, myself. Hey, JL says that she saves the empty bags, like from the other produce, uh -huh. to, to shove the the onion the onion trimmings off into so they don't stink up the cabinet that the gar that the garbage is in. Oh, that's a good idea. She, Tammy makes a lot of garbage though. Our garbage doesn't spend <laughs> a lot of time in the cabinet. It turns over pretty quickly because with all the produce we go through. Uh, it's true. In all those plastic bags she mentioned earlier, it fills up pretty fast. You know, it's not it the does. bags. It's these. It's these um, bins that Costco insists on using for the baby kale and the spinach. Or did these come? This is whole, actually Whole Foods. So these things are what fill up. I, if I can, if I'm in the kitchen, I'll grab them and I'll take them straight out to the dumpster. So. Yeah, anyway, they do. You know, so our this... our municipal waste does do a better job than most on recycling. They recycle. They go actually. They go through. Uh, they open up every bag of trash and they pull out bottles, any aluminum cans, uh, anything like that. Um, any yeah, so we don't any, have any to. quote unquote recyclable plastics. Uh, we've watched some documentaries that many alleged recyclable plastics aren't so recyclable. Um, but our right. city has a very good reputation for doing what they can. Our waste district actually turns a profit on on their repurposing of materials that come into it. So interesting. Yes, it is. Okay, so I'm just getting my red cabbage sliced. As you, as our regular viewers know, that Tom and I like to chop our salads, and so. I don't have to worry about getting it too much. Tom, if you would um, talk for a minute, I got to go over here. Okay. All right. T Tammy's making a run to the sink. Stephanie Spear is here, and she says she made the dressing um, off of the Amazon Live event. And even though she's an absolute garlic lover, the six or eight cloves for me was a bit much. Maybe my garlic cloves were just too big. Next time I'll cut back. They also come in different strengths. Some <laughs> garlic is mild, and other garlic, just like onions. Another right. garlic is, is quite pungent, and so, um, so yeah, you have to kind of cut one open and, and, and check it out before you dump the rest of them in, I think, is a good idea. Yeah, like so. the, the garlic that I have right now, the cloves are really small, mm -hmm. and so I'm having to use more of them because... Yeah. The ones you used on the video, not the Amazon Live, because I don't remember what those looked like, but the ones on the video were kind of medium to medium large. Uh-huh. And I think you used a half a dozen on that. On the, Six to eight, I say. On the, on the but of, also, you know, here's the thing. Like somebody asked me, like, what does beet juice taste like? Is it better? Well, for some people it would be um, better or sour, and for other people not because we all have a little bit different taste preferences. Yeah, like I like more stringent things than sweet things. Right. Yeah. And so that's a very individual thing. Like how much garlic too is a very individual thing because mm -hmm. we all have different taste preferences. And so you have to remember that when you're making recipes too. It's just like I was teaching a cooking class here in our kitchen one time. We had like 18 people here. It was a Mexican um, feast, mm -hmm. I think was the fiesta, I think we called it. And um, I can't remember if it was the cheese sauce that I made that we had everybody taste, or it was either that or the salsa. One lady in the front row watching and tasting said, oh my gosh, this is like way too spicy. I, there's no way I can eat it. And then a lady in the back said, are you kidding me? This has no no spice to it at all. I need a, to be a lot spicier than this. And I just had to laugh because they were tasting the exact same uh, recipe and had two completely different opinions. And so, um, so when you're trying people's recipes from their blogs or YouTube channels or their websites, keep that in mind that um, you know, like I've tried some recipes before that got rave reviews. Uh, they were someone else's recipe and I didn't particularly care for it. That didn't mean that the recipe wasn't good. It just was my own personal taste preferences were just different. Okay, so now I've got the red cabbage and the red onions ready and I'm just going to set my cutting board aside for now and I'll pop right back. 
Oh, were you coming to get that, honey? I was. And I'm going to rinse my hands off. Sorry. So now, so I left I also, my camera and you I, left your camera and now there's nobody on there's camera. There's nobody on camera. That's okay. They trust that we're coming back. Okay. So here's what I do. Those are the only two things that I have to chop because I buy everything else all ready to go. So I'm just going to look at the chat feed here. Oh, yes, yeah, Stephanie says she might try it with roasted garlic and that could be delicious as well. Yes, it could. Roasted garlic is a very mild and a little bit sweeter flavor. And I think that would be really, really good. So let me know if you try it. That's just another extra step. And I probably most of the time don't have time um, to do that. But I, I need to try to incorporate roasting garlic in my batch prepping. That would be awesome because you can freeze it. Um, and so I could do a big batch of it and, and freeze it. And yes, the dressings have more flavor after they chill in the refrigerator. So, and that's especially true with the ranch dressing. A, a couple people wrote to me and said that they had it the, the day that they made it and it was good and they liked it, but the next day it was fantastic and they loved it so keep that in mind because then that the herbs and everything have a chance to um, develop and I, get even better I have a question for everybody yes did anybody notice that Tammy's hair is different this morning <laughs> <laughs> it's it's back very similar it's it's longer but it's back very similar to her pre COVID Bob style so anyway, yeah, she's been surprising me with straight hair the last couple of days. And I was like, wow, your hair looks like it used to. So anyway. <laughs> just uh, felt like doing something yeah, different. Yeah, the sign of the times. She's got well, this. my haircut, two haircuts ago, my hairstylist tried a different technique and it didn't work. And so we had to take some of the length off in order to... Um, Give me an opportunity to grow it out and not have it look so bad because it was looking really bad okay so what i have here are these are ziploc containers these are nine cup containers i used to make our salads bigger than i make them now and we really needed these nine cup containers in order for everything to fit um, i'm making our salads a little bit smaller now just because i was having trouble um, eating all of it and every day I was having leftover salad and then I would eat it for uh, part of my dinner but um, I uh, just asked Tom if it was okay if I made them smaller and he was fine with that because we add so much stuff to these salads when we go to eat them so I could use smaller containers I was at Target the other day and I looked to see what they had and this is a new uh, Ziploc rectangle. Um, I think it is this the deep. Uh, what does it say? Too deep. Yeah, these are the deep, and these are nine cup. And so you can see that they are shorter, but they're deeper. Um, unfortunately, they won't stack three high on my shelf in my refrigerator. So. Um, this isn't going to work for me. They don't make this one anymore. You might still find some in the stores or on Amazon. And then they had this Good Cook Everywhere that I also bought. And these are eight cup. And these would hold what I'm making now. But these two are too deep. And they won't, three of them won't stack in my refrigerator. So I'm still on the hunt. Um, for because these over time do end up breaking uh, So I'm still on the hunt for something that is the right size So I have 14 of the Ziploc containers out here and what I start with is My baby kale and I buy this at uh, it's organic. It's triple washed. It's from Whole Foods It's their 365 brand. I know this is going to be noisy when I rip this open I could have done it earlier, but I didn't. And then I used to mix everything up in a big stainless steel container. And um, then my friend Lori Armitage, who I interviewed, she's like, why do you do that? Just take it and put some in all the different containers. She said, I do exactly what you do and it takes half the time. So I was like, okay, I'm in, I'm in Lori. So I just take a handful of this 
and I just put it in the containers. I don't weigh it. I eyeball it. I just try to get it even. Um, somebody said, well, you could weigh those, but you know what? That's just going to take too much time, and I'm pretty good at eyeballing it. Did you talk about normal romaine yet? No, I, I actually put that. that in the title. You put that in the title. Yeah. So yeah, I used to buy romaine and put it. We were able to buy these little. Um, I'm making more of a mess than I usually do, just because I'm talking. Um, we used to be able to buy these nice little heads of romaine at Costco, but then they started being so buggy. They're organic. But oopsie, I'm going to have to take a little from Peter to pay Paul here. Um, they started being so buggy and so dirty that I stopped buying them because it was taking so much time just to wash it, dry it. I was having to wash every individual leaf like two or three times because it was so dirty. Okay, so there's, that's what I do with that. Uh, so I stopped buying that, and I'm using the arugula instead of it, and we love the salads just as much. Okay, now this is Earthbound Farms Organic Baby Spinach, also triple washed. Uh, the reason I want the triple washed is because this has already been washed and dried, so there's not a lot of moisture. What I do is I look at the date, and I make sure that the date on it is at or exceeds how long I need these to last. The date on the spinach is October 15th, which is next Friday. That's perfect because next Saturday I'll make new salads. And so that's going to be just perfect. So I open this. So pay attention to that. That's one of the things that I do. You want to make sure that all of the ingredients that you're using are very dry because the moisture is what's going to, to cause them to start to decay. So now I'm just going to put my spinach in and if I find anything yucky, like there's one that, a little piece that's kind of wilted, then I just pull that out. So, and you know, if I get a little more spinach in one container one day, that's okay. It's all going to even out in the end is what I figure. You know, we're going to end up eating everything over the course of the seven days. So, and the dark leafy greens are really good for our microbiome. And they know now that our gut brain connection is very important and we need to be feeding our gut lots of dark leafy greens as well as other vegetables and grains. So, and then I just look and see, oh, Tom, you got a question? If there's one container that needs a little more. Yes, Tom. Uh, question from Stephanie, uh, uh, going back to the garlic. If you freeze the roasted garlic in the super cubes, do you think it would permanently make them smell like garlic so they will not be usable for lemon juice or other non-savory items? You know, I haven't tried that, so I don't know. Um, they do, if you go to their website, they do have some Q&A on there, and they talk about what you can do if you've made something that causes an odor in them, so you can wash them in your... Um, dishwasher, you can soak, make a paste of baking soda and water and put that on them, or you can put them in the oven. So I don't remember for how long or what the temperature was. Now I, I have frozen a lot of curries and they haven't stained it or created a, um, a long lasting odor. So, but I don't know, garlic is so strong that it certainly could happen. Okay, so to replace the romaine, I use this triple washed, oh, that's, you know what? I bought baby spinach instead of arugula when I went to the store the other day. Look, this was supposed to be arugula and it's baby spinach. Well, normally, 
<laughs> I buy three packages. I always go grab the regular. That's you my do. job. You do. That's your go. job. And it didn't go well because he didn't go with me. Okay, this is more baby spinach instead of arugula. Imagine, though, <laughs> that this is arugula. Well, you're going to have to use that up and just have very spinachy salads. We're going to have week. very spinachy salads because we're going to have to use it up. That's right. That is so funny. Yeah, Tom usually goes over and gets this. Were you shocked? Were you? <laughs> I just now, just saw it, just now. After you opened them all. Uh-huh. And went, oh, no. Well, we've been using arugula instead of romaine in the salads. That so is so funny. There was a question from, I think it was from JL, uh, on how these fit in the refrigerator. So there's, uh, on Facebook or on the, on, <clears throat> on the blog, well, I'll show you as soon as I get them done. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I'll jump over to the blog and, um, and grab a picture of the refrigerator. Yeah. Well, blog. we're going to go to Whole Foods later today. So yeah. we'll get some arugula. So I'm not going to use that last bag. No, save some room for some arugula. I'll just save some room for some arugula. That is so funny. Well, that's what <clears throat> happens when you do lives. So normally this would be arugula. That is so funny. Okay. So now we've got our greens in there, and this one I'm just going to save because we'll get some arugula. And then I do broccoli slaw. And I like it because it's all ready to go, and it has carrots in it, as well as they take the stems of the, the chunky stems of the broccoli, and they shred them. And so, and broccoli, you know, is super healthy. It's a great cruciferous vegetable. And then I just divide this up amongst my salads because we like the flavor that it adds. We like the uh, nutrition and we like that crunch Here, that I got, it adds. I got a picture of the fridge with the salads in it. Um, oh, you did? Yeah, let me bring it over here. Put myself in a little window. And you're off camera. Okay, so this is inside the refrigerator. Uh, and so this is where Tammy was talking about how she likes it that they stack three high because you can see the way we've got this configured. All of the potatoes are on the right. Um, and then all of the salads are on the left. And so the, the center row, that's nine on that side, three, sta three stacks of three. And then on the left, there are two more stacks of... Um, couple more stacks so there's six there so yeah one two three four five six seven eight nine okay there's they go the long way behind that front and center so there's 12 salads on the left shelf of that refrigerator because we're using every single cubic inch of space possible and then uh, I see some squash and some beans and some broccoli and other stuff down below but anyway that's how they fit in the refrigerator for ours anyway yeah. but we do have a large capacity refrigerator and it's deep. It's a deep refrigerator. So um, it's been the best refrigerator that we've ever had. I absolutely love it because it, it just holds so much food. And we actually, we have two refrigerators. We'd have another one out in the garage that is just as big. And so that's like our holding place. Like the, I went out there this morning to get all of these ingredients because I keep them out there. And then I try to keep just mostly batch prep food in here. And then these are organic shredded carrots. And these are carrots. I bought the right thing for this. <laughs> and then I just add shredded carrots to the salads. JL made the mistake of putting uh, arugula in a smoothie once and it was it was too bitter. spicy. Yeah. Yeah. I do like arugula. I know not everybody likes it, but you know, pick whatever green you like that you want to use. And if you want to use romaine, you know, we did enjoy having romaine in the salads. But the great thing about not using that's uh, a little more here, not using the romaine, everything in these salads can be cooked. And so um, yesterday I didn't want a cold salad, so I took and just water sauteed the, the whole salad and had it hot with some hot rice and um, some, put some vinegar on it. Or you can do cheese sauce or you can do marinara. 
Um, or you, you can do salad dressing. I still can't believe that I bought spinach instead of arugula. See, honey, I really need you to go grocery shopping with me and guide me. It's well, just, you were probably trying to go fast, too. Yeah, it just wasn't but the yeah, same. Yeah, because it's over there to the right, and it's the three bags. You always do that part, yeah. yeah. And I thought, oh, I, I saw the sign, arugula, and then I was looking at the dates, and so I picked these because of the date, but then I didn't notice that it was spinach. All right, so I have that. Now I love the red cabbage because, you know, we're getting more cruciferous vegetables in here. So <laughs> Valerie says, <laughs> Valerie says, nice to see that you're human too. Happy spinach salads. <laughs> or, exactly. Or, or we, we actually, I have a, a return. I need to, an Amazon return. I need to take back to the locker at Whole Foods where they have it. So uh, we had plans of going back over to Whole Foods this That's morning the thing. anyway. Well, I'm glad so, we were going to go last and, and night. We're not, we're not going to return the spinach. We will eat the spinach. Yeah, we were going to go last night. And then I said, oh gosh, I'm so tired. Let's wait and go tomorrow. tomorrow. And I'm so glad we did because now we can I get didn't some know. Arugula. That, yeah, I didn't know that I had made a mistake. So, so, um, and so you can, here's the thing, you guys, you can make the salads as big or as little as you want. So some people write to me and say, you know, I could never eat a salad as big as you. Those salads are too big. I'm not telling you to make a salad the same size as mine. What I'm doing is I'm sharing with you what I do to inspire you so that you can adapt it to how it works in your life. And, and some people don't have the space to make 14 salads at one time. And that's okay. Make them twice a week if you need to make them twice a week. So that, because you don't have the refrigeration room, that's okay. But what I try to teach people is to work smarter, not harder in the kitchen. Because, you know, because we aren't using convenience items, this lifestyle can take a lot of time to prepare food and to continue to eat healthy. So, Tom, do you have a question? Um, uh, Misty Blue's liking that purple cabbage. She I says know. it's really pretty on, on screen here. Isn't it beautiful? I yeah. love it. I like it raw or cooked. It's so good. Yeah. So, and, and I don't worry too much about how it looks because we're going to end up chopping the salads. Okay, so now I just add some red onion. JL says that their salads look great. It looks like you have plenty to share. <laughs> Except she it's just a whole week's worth, one salad each. Yeah. So we will have them all ate up by the end of the week. We will. Um, you see, you cooked yours last night, right? I did. And then I, um, I had my salad yesterday. Actually, I had steamed vegetables yesterday, so I've, I've got an extra salad yet to eat. That's why there's one in there, but I'm yeah. going gonna, gonna to show them yeah, how to chop it. Yeah, because I went with it. a big pot of steamed vegetables in the, in the Instapot. Uh-huh. So, because uh, I was cold, I wanted something really hot. I know, it was, it was chilly yesterday. We were cold. I was cold all day yesterday. I drank yeah. hot tea. Oh my gosh, I had to get up so many times during the night to go to the bathroom because yeah. I drank so much herbal tea yesterday. Um, Laura's asking, do you wash the red cabbage? Uh, I, you know, I rinse it um, when I get it home and I try to peel off the outside leaves if there's any that are yucky. But I don't, I don't, you know, it's so compact that it's never dirty inside of it. And so, you know, um, when you go to like shred cabbage or something, I never take the leaves apart and... Um, rinse every leaf. I don't. I just wash the outside of it really good. Because they're pretty tightly grown. They're very yeah. tightly grown. You know, they're talking about the colors of the of the salad here. Yeah. Um, so we have, we start out with all these colors that she's she has there, over there on the counter and then we chop them up and then I will actually dice up uh, celery and add celery to that and then I'll rinse some black beans. Tammy prefers pinto. I prefer black beans and I'll throw some fresh corn, uh, frozen corn out of the from Trader Joe's on there. And and then more recently, I've been either throwing the ranch dressing or the Caesar dressing uh, that, that we just released those two videos and stir that up. But but 
but it's so vibrant. There's so, the, the mix of, it makes me think of, um, just, it makes me think of my, my childhood days on the farm because there's just so much color color to it. Yeah. Yeah. So it makes me think of my grandmother's garden. Um, and it also just everything tastes so good. Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to talk tomatoes. So all summer long, we had homegrown tomatoes. Tom did a great job with our tomatoes this year. And so we had homegrown tomatoes. They're all gone now. And so I'm having to buy them. I buy these at Costco. And when I get home, I go ahead and wash them. They're organic little tomatoes. And I wash them. I lay them out on a kitchen towel. And I let them dry. And then they're ready to go in our salads. And so, and people ask me, do they get mealy? These don't seem to get mealy. So, um, they seem to do okay in the fridge. So then I just put them on here. Oh, and I wanted to talk to you about, I don't know if you can see this very well, but these, these are getting all puckery. Do you see that? These are some that I had left over from last week and they're puckery. They are okay to use. They're just starting to dehydrate. They are starting to lose their moisture. These are perfect to cook with. And so you can saute with them with your vegetables in a skillet on the stove, or I like to oven roast them. And I have a recipe on the blog. I think it's called oven roasted ratatouille. And you can just put these with onions and garlic and zucchini and eggplant and mushrooms, whatever vegetables you have on hand and oven roast them and they are perfect. So don't throw them away. They're perfect to use just, just like that um, if you cook them and that it's just a little bit dehydrated. So then I just add my tomatoes. I just do a row of them and we actually, when we go to chop our salads, we cut these tomatoes in half at that time. Um, otherwise, they can squirt and really make a mess um, of your clothes or your kitchen counter if you, if you start chopping them without cutting them first. So I just do that. And when Tom's helping me with batch cooking, he usually puts the tomatoes on for me. And they don't seem um, to be bothered by being in the fridge for the week. So, and then I'll have tomatoes left over, which I love because I like to use them um, to garnish any kind of Mexican food that I make or add extra ones to my salads throughout the week. It just depends on what my mood is and what kind of salad I'm having. And you can change these up, you guys. They don't have to taste the same every day. You can change ingredients that you add to them. So, because Tom, maybe you can find a picture of one of the collages of my salads and post that. One of the collages from like Instagram, you mean, or? Yeah, it could be Facebook. If you go to my Facebook page and click on, if you go to Nutmeg Notebook Facebook page and click on okay. photos, you can find one of the collages. Okay, so now I have those all ready and then I just put my lids on them. Now the nice thing about these Ziploc containers is you can see how they nest. And that's really important when you're considering what kind of containers to get. That's why I use all the same container is because they nest this way and the containers will stack in the fridge. So um, the containers are gonna make or break how much food you can store in your fridge and how many containers you can store in your given counter space or um, drawer space or cupboard space that you have. So I just put those on. And I like to use clear containers in my refrigerator because I like to be able to see what it is that we have in containers. You're talking, way, about, you're talking about after you've dressed them out in, in, yes, in the bowls? Yes, yes. Okay. You should be able to find one of the collages. I know I have them on, is that my computer or your computer? Because if you go to my this pictures. Is my, this is my computer. Okay. I was going to say, in my pictures, I have a 
folder called salads. It's okay. There's a bunch on Instagram. Well, you can grab what, grab it off Instagram then. Okay. And I, I scrub down my kitchen counter before I make the salads, you guys. That way, if I do pick something up off the counter, I know that it is vegetable matter and that my counter is clean. And so it's okay to do that. Now, because everything in here was very dry to begin with, these salads are going to absolutely last seven days. I've even eaten one like 10 days later because, you know, something happened and one of us ended up not eating a salad and, um, you know, I've, they've been good up to 10 days. So, which I know is, it sounds crazy and amazing. Now, some people that like grow their own greens and so they have to wash them and dry them to put them in. What they tell me they do is they put a paper towel on the bottom of the container and then they put a paper towel on the top of the container before they put the lid on and that way that absorbs any extra moisture that's in there and notice I don't put anything like I don't put red bell peppers in there I don't put um, cucumbers in there not until the day that I'm going to eat the salad so that's when I will take and put in the more moist type vegetables that um, you know don't do well when they're pre-cut and um, that's one of the secrets to being able to make these ahead of time and if you want to you know pre-cut some of that stuff and put it in airtight jars to already have it to sprinkle on the salads the day you eat it you can do that too you know that's very popular a lot of people make those jar salads that way okay Here, here's um okay here's that's a good one. Okay. You can put that up. And But you might want to talk about the, the chopped salad is all chopped, but hiding underneath all of your add-ons. That's got, right. So, if you so can... in these pictures that Tom um, has up here, that is where I took one of these batch prepped salads and I chopped it to make it all small. And then that's where I'm showing you all the stuff that I put on top of it. And, um, you know, you can make them different. So I'm seeing, so I'm seeing air the, fried potatoes. I'm seeing uh, chickpeas and blueberries. I'm seeing your, your uh, corn chips. Well, okay, chips, so let me fried. start. The one, the big one, um, upper left, mm -hmm. that has plantains. And so I oh. just brown the plantains. Here. I better yeah. shut this or it's going to start beeping at me. I just um, saute the plantain here, here, in you, a dry you have to be on this if you're going to talk about it why don't you come right here because oh come is, over here yeah because because we're on okay we're on we're on tom cam <laughs> okay so tom cam so um for that the upper left one that is plantains i just when the plantains get really ripe i just peel them cut them in half and um, i heat up my scan pan or a non-stick griddle and i just brown them just you know, a few minutes on each side. You don't have to use any oil. They turn out great. And that's garbanzo beans, some of our homegrown um, sprouts. It looks like broccoli sprouts there. I have some chopped jicama, some green onions, blueberries, and some strawberries. And um, that looks like the, um, the witch dressing it's not the ranch so it must be the caesar dressing on that and i have a little bit of mango there oh i think that was my tropical salad that i used in that one and then if you go over to the upper right hand corner that is some hannah yam that i um, uh, cooked in the air fryer so it was a pre-baked hannah that i cut in half and then i cut each half into slices so they look like half moons put them in the air fryer 400 degrees for um, 15 to 20 minutes and get them toasty and they're just they're crispy on the outside and soft and gooey on the inside they're so good and then that is some oven roasted um, baby sweet peppers blueberries garbanzos some corn on the cob um, that i cut off the cob and um, I don't have a dressing on that one, so I probably used a vinegar. And then the one down below it, 
That is just Yukon Gold potatoes that I air fried. They were cold baked ones from the um, batch prepping. Strawberries, blueberries, a few garbanzo beans, and a vegetable patty. And then again, some um, Caesar dressing over the top. And then um, the bottom one, uh, fruit. I love to add fruit to it. And I'm gonna show you how to make those JSP croutons there. And then the one over on the left lower, left hand corner is a taco salad. And that one, I have my chipotle nacho cheese sauce. I can't see here whether it was beans or taco lentils. And then I take corn tortillas and I just slice them really in thin strips and air fry them like 375 degrees for um, four minutes or so, depends on how thick they are. And then um, it's just absolutely delicious. So there you go. Thanks, Tom. Are you gonna show how these things go into the refrigerator? I am. I am going to do that. Okay, cover. you guys, so let me show you how we get these to fit in here. So I take three at a time, and this is what I like about how this is arranged, how the racks are arranged. And remember that your racks are adjustable, and so you can adjust them to accommodate the food that you're gonna store. This is an extra rack that I bought. Um, we have this in our Amazon store. It, I think it comes with two or three, and I use it because I wanted to you know, take advantage of that empty space up there because my potatoes that I batch prep are down here. And I thought, well, that's wasted space up there, and I don't like to cover the potatoes because then they get soggy. So I just found a rack that would fit in there. And then I take three more of them and I turn them upside down so that they'll fit. And I just get them tucked back in there. And if you can step aside so we can see too when you're done. Okay. So I just get them in there like that. There we go. Got it. And then three more in like that. So that's nine. <laughs> And then I do like three here and one here. 13. And then voila. 14 plus all your potatoes. Yeah. It can be done. And then I still have room. I still have room left over for more um, batch prepping, whatever I want to batch prep. And so that's. That's what we do. And so you see, when we come to the refrigerator, we have all these wonderful choices to choose from. And then I'm gonna show you, I use the plastic bins to organize what I have in the crispers. And then if something does go bad and you know leaks juice or whatever, it's contained within this, it doesn't make the whole crisper dirty and in this one I have citrus and apples and um, avocado um, back in there and this one is things that are mostly in bags that's my dump soup bin that's your dump soup bin but it helps um, just to keep organized in there and you will see like you know we um, we cook SOS free no salt no oil no sugar but I do use some condiments that have salt in them because um, neither one of us have hypertension or um, any heart problems or anything like that. And so, um, because everything else we eat has just a natural, whatever the natural amount of sodium that is in the produce or um, the fruits or the vegetables or the beans, then I figure we have an allowance there to have a little bit of uh, condiments that have salt in them. So now I wanna show you what we do with those batch prepped salads. So this is one that I made last week. It's the one that I pulled out of the fridge. So that one's a week old. So this one's a week old. Now I'll have to look at the greens to make sure there isn't like any little green that's gone, gotten gooey or anything when I dump it in the, um, in the bowl. 
And you know, every once in a while there'll be one that, that's bad. So then we like to chop the salads. Why do you chop a salad? Well, they are easier to eat for one thing because you're reducing the volume of them. But the really big factor is the flavor because once you chop the salad, every bite has a little bit of everything in it. And so it tastes so good, you guys. It reduces the amount of salad dressing that you're going to need because it also releases the natural um, moisture, the juices that are in all of the vegetables. And so you'll use less dressing as well just because the flavor is just so wonderful once you chop it. So we use the Holland Wood Bowl. I have a whole video showing you how to chop a salad without a Holland Bowl because you don't have to have one of these. You can use a cutting board, you can use a food processor, or you can use the, um, the OXO company has a salad chopping bowl and um, it comes with a, a chopper. And so, but I wanna show you what we do with the Holland Bowl. So, and I'm, I have different sizes here to show you because that's always a question with people what size to get. This, this is a 12 inch bowl and some people do buy this and then they're very disappointed because it's so small and the, you know, it's not as deep. So the bigger in diameter you go with these bowls, the deeper they are. Um, this is a great size to use for chopping herbs, but it would never hold my salad because my salads are just too big. So this is a 15 inch cherry and this one is mine. And then this is a 15 inch um, beech wood and this one is Tom's. And this one is from 2018. So, you know, it has seen a lot of wear and tear. This one is a little bit newer. I think I got this one in 2019. And we chop in these every day. So I also chop herbs in mine, but we chop our salads in these every day um, and they work beautiful. Now this is a 17 inch and this is a cherry and it's 17 inch and you can see that it is quite a bit bigger. This is great if I wanna chop like two salads at the same time in the in the big bowl because when you're chopping the pieces start flying and it contains them within the bowl and so it won't all fly out and this is also a really great size if you're having family over and you're setting up a buffet or you know or you want to take a big salad with you um, to a potluck then that works really great so that's the 17 inch but there's a big price difference in these these are from the holland bowl mill company and i am an affiliate with the holland bowl mill i was using their products for at least a year and i called them to say um, can you get more bowls on Amazon because my followers want to buy your bowls? And he said, well, I can sell them direct. Would you like to be an affiliate? And I said, how does that help my, my followers get bowls? And he said, I have plenty of bowls here. I can fulfill the orders. And so that's how we um, started to be affiliates with them. So any of the hardwoods are great. All of the Holland Bowl Mill bowls are great to use for chopping. And if you use our affiliate link and your um, order is a minimum $125, then you will get a free mezzaluna knife to cut the salad with. And, um, and the beechwood bowl at this time is for a 15 inch is $125. So I'm gonna set those aside and I'm going to be using the 15 inch cherry because that's my bowl. So what I do is first, <clears throat> excuse me, I cut the tomatoes and yeah, you can it. use a knife or you can use the mezzaluna. You have a question, Tom? Yeah, um, I was talking to one of our viewers here about the link for those nice, you know, the Ziplocs and and, I, and as Tammy mentioned earlier, that availability of those has been a problem lately. And you said that they're actually planning on discontinuing them. Yeah. Well, they don't have them anymore. Yeah. And at I just checked Target. on I just checked on our Amazon 
uh, page because we actually have under our storage, uh, food storage idea list on our Amazon shopping page, the links down below in the description. Um, the picture of, the, of a two pack of those is still there, but it says unavailable. Oh, mm -hmm. so we're going to be exploring the not the glass version. We have lots of the snaplock glass containers. We use those a lot. We're happy because of the way they stack. They stack very firmly and and so forth. But they're going to be too heavy to have that many of them in there. So we're going to explore the the plastic version of the snaplock, but we have not got those yet. So. I have, to, I have to kind of, like Tammy said earlier, stay tuned on optimal storage solutions for batch prep salads. Right. Where you are currently on a hunt and don't have a forward moving solution ready at this time. So we will let you know as soon as we do. Yeah. And if you're not making as many salads as us, these, these other two brands that I showed, these two might work for you um, in your refrigerator. Right after the show. Depending on how many salads yeah. you're going to make. Yeah, after the show, I can find those and put those in 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 the um, idea Amazon list. Amazon list, and yeah. then I'll put a, and I'll put a link uh, in the in the description. Yeah. So, so you know, just go to your um, your local Target, Walmart, whatever stores like that that you have, and look and see what they what they have. And there are some other um, off brands you know, more generic brands, just make sure that the lids fit on them really good because when we are going to be gone for the day, we actually use these containers to take our chopped salad in. Okay, so I cut my tomatoes. I just cut them in half and that just keeps them from exploding. And if you want more tomatoes, you know, add tomatoes. You don't like tomatoes, don't use tomatoes. And then I'm just going to put my salad in here and I'm just checking to make sure that it's not so I do have a couple pieces here in the bottom that are just a little bit uh, wilty. So I'm dumping those. And remember, this is a week old salad. So I think it's looking pretty good. V Forbes says that Target has their own branded containers and that, that those are working for her. So Great. This so, is so good to know. So we'll be checking there as well. Right. And we'll certainly share whatever solution we come up with because height is... A critical thing for us to, to get that to get that three high that's a that's a deal breaker we got to be able to stack on three high or that densely uh, packed refrigerator well, it's solution not, won't work it's not that we couldn't store them store some of them in the oh, garage oh you want me to walk fridge. out to the garage to the fridge to go get a salad uh, all the way to the garage all the way to the garage that's got to be at least 25 steps come on so it's just, I just, I don't know. There's something about having it all done and having it all in this fridge so that we can open it up and see, oh, look at what we have. And it really keeps us on the straight and narrow. So, you know, um, it would be so easy on the days that we go to our daughter's house to watch the kids. It would be so easy on the way home to decide to go pick something up from a vegan restaurant, right? Um, which, you know, we can, we're, we're fortunate where we are. We can get some oil-free um, vegan food. Uh, it's not salt-free, however, and some of it is probably higher calorie density than what we would eat at home. And it's a whole lot more expensive. But on our way home, we know that we have salads ready or soup ready or potatoes ready. And so there's no question. We just come home and we eat. And most of the time, we're just so much happier having our own food. Tom, you have a question? Yeah, uh, Mr. Blue's got a couple questions. Um, how much time uh, doing the batch prep do you suppose it saves a day as opposed to making a salad every day? Well, when I'm not talking and doing this on um, video, I can make 14 salads in 30 minutes. And if I had to make those salad, if I had to get everything out over seven days to make us that's a like salad, four minutes per salad. Of it, it would probably take me 20 minutes, to 30 minutes out. to to pull everything out and to prep everything to make salads for us daily. It would probably take 20 to 30 minutes every so day. So you're probably saving it at least an hour, if not two hours, conservatively. Well, more than that. Yeah. If I had to do that seven times. Well, here's the other thing. 
the salads wouldn't happen because they're not ready. They wouldn't be fast food. And uh -huh. if we're not fast food, we would get busy and, and grab well, something else. When, so. when we first started eating salads every day, I was making them every day. And that every was a day. whole process that took two of us. And it, it took such a long time yeah. to make those salads. And I was like, this is not sustainable. I can't do it. I'm going to come so, I'll run the camera and get a close up of your chopping here. Oh, well, I'm, I'm done chopping, but well, go well, ahead and well, bring well, it. Okay. So when I'm not talking, it Tom timed me just to see how long it took. And it takes three minutes to chop the salad. And so I can just, you know, I go to the fridge. We both do. We pull out a salad and we chop it. And, and that's the color and uh, with nothing in it. That's just your basic ingredients. This is just the basic ingredients. Okay. And so then from here then this is like a blank slate and you can do anything with it. You can add lentils, you can add cooked beans, you can add, I can do like the taco salad where I'll add beans, corn, and either rice or oat groats and um, chipotle nacho cheese sauce and some salsa. And then the crispy um, little um, corn tortillas. I'll make those little crispy little corn tortilla strips and I can have this can be a Mexican salad. Tom likes to, he does it with, he makes chips instead of the strips and we have a video on that and he does um, beans, rice, corn and salsa and he heats his bean, rice, corn and salsa up and puts it on the salad so that it's hot and then he has his little corn tortilla chips to use as little scoops and that's how he loves to eat his um, chopped salad Mexican style. But you can add potatoes, you can add rice, you can add fruit. And I encourage you to add some fruit because adding fruit to it adds a little bit of sweetness, especially if you don't like the bitter flavor of the greens. It adds a little bit of sweetness to it as well as moisture and just makes it like super delicious. Um, so, so good. So, um, so anyway, you can add whatever you want. Sky's the limit. Fresh herbs also are wonderful. I love, if I'm doing Mexican, I like to chop my salad with some fresh cilantro in there. If I'm going to do a different version, like fresh basil is really good. Rosemary, thyme, mint. Mint is fantastic in it. And the fresh herbs just really change the flavor profile and you know the mint is just really soothing and just calming on the gut and so i really do enjoy adding fresh mint to it or you can do dill and then i want to show you what i like to do i'm just going to grab a cutting board here tom maybe you need to talk for a second okay yeah uh, there was a, a question about the the uh, containers in the refrigerator yeah and I'm not ignoring you guys. I'm looking at the computer screen right I just over gotta here. I've got to rinse my knife off. And so I will, um, I think we had those little skinny ones that you've got the, the fruits and the citrus and stuff in, in the yeah. crisper drawer. Uh huh. Have you added those to our Amazon? I don't know if I have or page. not. Um, Look up refrigerator storage containers. Okay. Oh, and if you do decide to order a Holland Bowl, and Tom, can you put a link to Holland Bowl in it's, the show? It's in the show notes already. Okay. Well, it's, so in yeah. the description? Yeah, it's in the description. If you scroll down and find Holland Bowl Mill, that link takes you to Tammy's landing page at Holland Bowl Mill. And on that page, it describes um, getting the free Mansaluna knife and, and you order just the bowl. That down lower in the page, it talks about chopping bowls. Don't go there. If you go there, you're paying for the knife Yeah. because it's built into the price. With Tammy's deal, you just order a bowl and they throw in the knife, no charge. So, so read the little, you know, top part of the page is, is the portal to get into the different bowls. Um, so if you do decide to order a Holland bowl oh, here um, they are. and you get the free knife, if yeah. you want the sheath to hold it, this is separate and order it um, at the same time that you're getting the bowl because you get free shipping when you order the bowl and um, so but you have to purchase this separately so I do like to tell people that because I do like having the sheath for it okay so, are these are here I put them on screen here are these the this is in our in our Amazon storage 
Ideal as storage works, medium fridge, organizer bins. It looks like they might be a little bit wider. Do oh, well, there's two sizes. There's the, different the, sizes. There's medium and there's large. Yeah. And see, I use these skinny ones like this for um, the stuff that little jars and things. And that oh, makes them... Oh, hold on, you're not on screen. Hold on. Oh. Okay. So see the skinny ones? Yeah. I like to use those for the little jars of stuff. Okay. Because it just makes it so much easier to get those out. And see, then I have another one. I don't know if you can see it. I have another one over here that I use. Yeah, we can see that. Okay. This one was made for beverages, but, you know, I don't have canned Well, these here are about the width, are about the width of a soda can, soda can laying on its side. Yeah. That's, that's what that one up there is. Okay. So I'm just going to get my potato out. All right. Because I want to make... The, I'm going to show you guys how to make the um, everything bagel croutons. Because they are so good. I'm going to put the... Uh, okay, so any questions about the chopped salads? Uh, let me go back and check. So I'll tell you that a lot of people tell me they didn't used to love their salads and st until they started chopping them and then they loved them. Or their kids wouldn't eat them or their husband wouldn't eat the salads until they started chopping salads. And so when we have a get together, I'll do a chopped salad. I, one of my favorite ones is to do strawberries or pineapple and uh, blueberries, uh, some corn. It, it sounds like a weird combination, but it's really, really good. And then some balsamic vinegar. And if you can get one of the sweeter balsamic vinegars, like from California Balsamic or Napa Valley Naturals, Grand Reserve, which those are um, syrupy, a little bit sweeter balsamics, and they're only 4% acidity instead of 6%. And so even people who don't like vinegar will like those and drizzle that over. So delicious. Or now that I have my vegan ranch and the vegan Caesar, anybody would love those vegan ranch or the vegan Caesar. And so um, for fall, here's one that I like to do for fall. Oh, I gotta grab my everything bagel. Jesse was just, just able to, to join us, one of our moderators, Jesse. Hey, Jesse. So, hello. so this is everything bagel seasoning, and this is a salt, oil, sugar free one that I buy from Well Your World, and we are affiliates with. Uh, well your world but we love their we love their products and you guys we only promote things that we actually use and love and so um, I'm going to make everything bagel croutons with a Japanese sweet potato which we lovingly in the plant-based community we like to call these JSPs so this is a Japanese sweet potato that I've already baked I baked these on Friday I think because um, I do my batch prepping a little bit each day and I do 400 degrees, depending on the size, about an hour and 15 minutes. And then I put them in the refrigerator to chill them. And this is oozing its delicious sweet juice right now. I don't know if you can see that on the cutting board. And so I just cut it open and then I'm just going to slice it. So you get those fun little half moon shapes. I buy organic, so I do like to um, eat the skin of them. And because they're organic, I feel like I can. And I just, I scrub them really well with a vegetable brush. Um, sometimes they're very dirty. Sometimes they're fairly clean. And so I wish I'd had time to make some of these ahead of time. But you'll get the, you'll get the whole idea here. So I just cut them. I like to keep the skin on them because in the I'm going to air fry these and in the air fryer they're going to get crispy and they'll be so delicious. And they just add so much. Well, that one's a fail. Um, to the to the salad. Okay, then let me get my rack I have to move my flowers. Now this is my Breville Smart Oven Air, and it is a toaster oven and an air fryer. Okay, so now I have that no salt, um, everything bagel seasoning on my plate, and I just 
go like this and get that seasoning on the cut piece of Japanese sweet potato. And I just coat one side of it because that gives you plenty of flavor. And it's going to get all nice and toasty in the air fryer, which just enhances the flavor of the everything bagel and enhances the flavor of the, um, of the Japanese sweet potato as well. Now, these are great on the salad. They're also wonderful just for a snack. And if I'm short on time, if I don't have time to make the individual croutons, I'll just take the half like this and I'll just dunk it in the everything bagel seasoning and just air fry it like that. And that's also really tasty. Because, you know, sometimes I just, sometimes I don't have the time to stand here and to do this. Life is busy and you can do these um, ahead of time. They will lose some of their crispness if you do them ahead, um, you know, and oh, then have there, them at lunchtime. There was a question earlier when you were talking, um, which I hadn't uh, um, raised my hand for, uh, about chopping the salads the night before if you, you have to can. work. You can. You um, can. A lot of people tell me that they do it because they chop it after dinner. Um, because they have to get up to go to work so early the next morning. So, um, you know, we chop ours the day that we're going to eat it. But if I had to get up really early to go someplace, um, you could chop it the night before. I just wouldn't put any dressing on it or vinegar on it until you're ready to eat it. I mean, you could if you were putting it on in the morning and going to eat it at um, noon. But, you know, vinegar starts to break things down because it's an acid. And so that will start to break down the vegetables. So you don't want to add it too soon. So I would just take your salad dressing with you and add it right before you're going to eat. These are so pretty too. So you could use these as an appetizer as well. If you're having a get together or it's, you know, football Sunday. You could make up a whole um, tray of these and that could be a wonderful, healthy treat for people to eat while they're watching a game. And I do, I will make these ahead of time, even if we're going to be, you know, gone for the day and have to take our salads with us. Um, I'll do them ahead of time. And they'll, they'll lose a little bit of their crispness, but they're still super delicious. There's something so magical that happens in the air fryer when you air fry an already cooked potato, any kind of potato. Now, if you can't get the Japanese sweet potatoes like this, you could use um, Hannah yams or you can use a regular sweet potato. The regular sweet potatoes are a little more soft and moist. And so... Um, you know, they might not slice quite as well. You might want to just under bake them just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put these in the um, oven and I don't preheat my oven. I'm going to have to move those flowers so they don't get cooked. I'm going to take my extra rack out. An you know, example of why it's nice to have that cutting board on top because you can just drop stuff up on top there. And not worry about scratching it. And I'm going to set this for like 15 minutes and that'll give us some delicious croutons. Now you can also just do that without the everything bagel seasoning. And um, if you can't order the one from Well Your World, Sprouts has a brand that is um, salt free and sugar free also that's called everything bagel if you have a sprout store i know not everybody has those but look at your store look online uh, we do have a salt free one that is on our amazon page as well 
um, that you can buy there. And then um, what I like to do this time of year are apples and the little clementines. So with those croutons. And you can add garbanzo beans if you want or not. Uh, I will be coming out, we filmed it already, um, a recipe for doing the garlic chickpea croutons, which I absolutely love in my salads. They're so amazing. You guys, Tom, could you hand me the apple slicer? So I've already washed my apples. I washed all the apples before I put them in the crisper because I know that's going to be a question. So when I just when I get home from the grocery store, I just put everything in my sink. I scour my sink first, put everything in my sink, give everything a good wash, and then put it in my dish drainer, and that works great. Now this is just a nice little apple slicer. This is a juicy apple. Um, these were pink ladies, I Apple think. 369 says, did someone say apple? Yeah. <laughs> We did. Yeah, so it's apple season, you guys, and they're so delicious right now. Do you want to gnaw on this core? Do you want this apple core? No, I'm good right now. You're good? Okay, I'm just going to toss it then. Um, so the apples are just beautiful right now, and there's so many different varieties that you can get. So for this one, I just like to um, dice it up because it's really fun to be able to get like little bite of apple in every bite of salad. But I like, I don't like to chop it with my salad because I want it to be a little bit bigger so that I get that little crunch and that burst of apple. So I'm just dicing these and then and I usually do like half an apple for me, and then I'll give half an apple to Tom. And so you can make them whatever size you prefer. I've got that chopped green salad all over my fingers. Really hangs on, doesn't it? Okay, so I have that. So there you can see have that going and then I like to Susan Johnston got here she knows your hairstyle was pre-coded oh <laughs> yeah it's it's a little bit longer than it was pre-covid but um, it's actually not cut to uh, go like this but I don't know for some reason this week I've just wanted it to be more straight I haven't <coughs> wanted to to curl it so and my hair is very very wavy so I have to uh, blow it out with a big round brush and then use a straightening iron on it. Yeah. Oh, John is asking, oh, uh, John's asking while you're dicing away there, yeah. the size of our refrigerator comes up because of how much stuff we're storing in there. <coughs> it is a bigger one, it's a 28 cubic foot. It's a GE brand. They G don't make- GES 28 and then whatever else, they, they don't make this exact model one. anymore. Yes. They make similar ones. Um, but yeah, we, it's, a, it's a deeper version. We saw one at Costco, <coughs> bless you honey, that's very I'm similar, sorry. but it's not as deep as this one. But Jesse says it's, I was going to, Jesse says she was going to say it looks like we've come full circle on hairstyles. Yeah, a, I think we have. <laughs> it's, well, a good, it's a good sign. Eventually we'll get back to our uh, life as normal. Yeah. So this is just the little clementine. I've got so much chopped lettuce hanging on me. I really like these in salads. Um, you know, great little burst of vitamin C, although a, a red bell pepper has more vitamin C than an orange, believe it or not. Um, but these add such a wonderful flavor to the salad. And, you know, these can, this salad, can you can dress it with one of my dressings if you want. You can use the Caesar. You can use the ranch. You can use the creamy balsamic. Oh, this one's not looking so good. This one's looking a little dried up. I'm going to grab a different one, you guys. I'm 
That one's looking a little bit dry. So, and Costco has these right now. Pretty soon we'll get to buy the local ones because we're very close to um, an area that is known for growing mandarins because the days are warm and the nights are cool. And I guess that's like the optimal um, climate for growing really juicy, sweet clementines. And so they'll be showing up pretty soon in our stores here locally, as well as um, at the farmer's market. So then I just, I like to, you know, I make pretty salads for you guys to, so I can photograph them so that you can see what all I put in the salads. And um, I think Dylan calls this, you know, Instagram food, Dylan from Well Your World, um, because, you know, we're making food to look appealing for pictures for our Instagram accounts or to put on our blogs. And so I don't want you to feel like, oh my gosh, my salads don't look like that. That's okay. Um, if I'm making a salad and I'm not going to be taking a picture of it, um, I'll just mix it all together. I won't make it look like this. So see, isn't that pretty? Yeah, Tom. Uh, Jesse's wondering, we're gonna see how these croutons uh, come out because she, she does not have a breville, but her, she's had trouble with hers burning, uh, you know, the seeds getting too, too done. Well, cut back on the temperature then, do a lower temperature. Yeah. So the thing about the breville is there's quite a bit of space between the air frying rack and the heating element. And so I think we're able to get by with oftentimes doing a higher yeah, temperature. So this wouldn't maybe work so well in the Ninja, for instance, because it's really um, I would cut back on the temperature if I was doing them yeah. in our Ninja. And um, I, I did 400 degrees because I'm trying to rush it a little bit so it doesn't take so long. But like 385 can be a really good uh, temperature to get them crispy without burning all of the coating on it. So, um, so, so for this one, you could definitely add some garbanzo beans if you wanted to. That would go really well with this. And then I'll also show you something that I like to add to my salads. In fact, I add this to everything. I add it to our vegetables. I add it to everything. These are the Nigella sativa. They're black cumin seeds, but they don't taste anything like the brown ground cumin that we use in Indian food and in our Latin American dishes. Um, it tastes more like black pepper. And I learned about this from Dr. Greger when he wrote the How Not to Diet book. And this is something that he suggests everybody have that wants to lose weight. Um, you can have like a quarter teaspoon of it a day and it's supposed to help with your appetite and all kinds of um, things. I forget everything that it's good for. So, but you buy it whole like this and then you need to grind it. And so I have this I'm getting, I'm getting lettuce on everything. And so this is a gravity um, grinder. So when you turn it over, it's battery operated. And so I love it on my salads and my vegetables. And so I just do a generous amount of it. That's probably about a quarter of a teaspoon. We do have this on our Amazon store. So Tom, I'm talking about the, the, the um, yeah. black cumin seeds. So, so I just keep them in the grinder all the time and then we put them on there and oh, it's, it's just so delicious. So this salad, um, it, gosh, it's been two years since I saw my parents in Nebraska. I went to Nebraska and um, I have a chopping bowl there. I have the OXO chopping bowl there that I just leave there so that I can chop salads when I'm there. If you don't have an air fryer, know that you can make these in your broiler. My mom didn't have an air fryer then, she does now. I made this salad for us every day and my parents loved it. My mom normally can't get my dad to eat a salad and he ate this salad every day. 
and I just used their broiler because they didn't have an air fryer and I made the croutons every day while I was there. I didn't have the everything bagel seasoning then. I was just making just the regular croutons and oh, they were so good. Just making sure it's doing fine. Um, and you can add blueberries to this too. In fact, I think I will. That would be really good to add some blueberries to this. These have not been pre-washed. Tom, could you rinse just like a handful or two of the blueberries okay. um, for me? That would be great. So, um, oh, they're talking about mohawk haircuts. Uh, oh, I, Marcy says, I like pineapple in my uh, slaw and sometimes salad. Yes, pineapple is so good. It has such a sweetness, and I have a very ripe one that I need to cut today, and that would be so good in the salad. Is that enough? Yeah, I think that'll be great. So we'll add some blueberries to this. So, um, you know, blueberries are full of antioxidants, and they're one of the healthiest berries, and um, we try to eat some blueberries every day. You know, if you follow Dr. Joel Furman, you know that he, thank you, honey, that he um, has his G-bombs, he calls them, and that's the greens, the beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds that um, he says that you should eat every day. So, so now I'm just going to, I'm going to add some blueberries to this as well, and it'll be beautiful. And it's going to taste so great. And these are really nice sized ones that I got. Um, these are organic ones that I found at Costco the other day. But of course, we're at the end of blueberry season. And we're going to have to switch to getting... Now, do you have to match them so there's one blue, blue, blueberry per mandarin slice? Well, or I, you know, for an Instagram picture, yes. <laughs> Just what about to, for a YouTube video? Yeah, I want a big one. I think you're freelancing a little bit here. You think so? Yeah. Look how pretty that is. I mean, it's just so inviting. Okay. It's gorgeous. So, and then of course you can eat one too, if you want. Okay. You guys have any questions for me? Uh, Apple three six nine says Tammy's salads are salad goals. Is Tiffany here? I saw somebody saying, hi, Tiffany. Oh, Tiffany. She, hi, Tiffany. She says, oh, there's okay. a, it's always right. time there's for the a flowers. great salad. There's the flowers. Oh, Just, is she wanting? Yeah, we had to move them for the oven. Yeah, I had to move them because I was using the oven, Tiffany. Well, um, you guys should follow Tiffany also on Instagram. Invite plants to every meal. Um, Tiffany is one of our moderators and she is a wonderful plant-based chef and she has amazing pictures of her food. Her food is so beautiful and then she takes these gorgeous artistic um, photographs. Uh, I have the link in the show notes down below for the Health Science Magazine. Oh yes, okay so Tiffany is, her recipes are going to be featured in the fall issue of Health Science Magazine and that is a whole food, plant-based, SOS-free publication that comes out quarterly. It's $35 a year to subscribe if you're in the continental United States. If you're outside of the United States, they can still ship it to you and cost a, send it to you. It costs a little bit more. But go on, Tom put the link in the show description down below underneath the video here and sign up because the magazine is just full of wonderful information about a whole food plant-based lifestyle and um, there's no advertisement in it and once you subscribe you have access to over 40 years worth of magazine magazines and all of the recipes as well as entire books online so um, it's well worth the um, $35 subscription feed. And it's a wonderful magazine and so many of our friends get profiled in it. Yes, Tom. What was the brand of the kelp granules that you mentioned? 
Okay. Gonna grab the, she's going to grab the canister I'll grab and, it. and show us. And are those the same ones you use in the, in the So this, in, the, in the if, you're, if you're talking about the kelp granules that I use in the dressing, that is this. If you're talking about the black seeds that I used on the salad, whoa, that would be this. No, this is kelp so, granules specifically. Okay, yeah. so the kelp granules are this, and these are available on Amazon. Um, I just buy them at uh, Whole Foods. Do I have it so it's showing right? Yeah, you're doing good. Okay, and so this gives you that ocean <laughs> flavor, if you will, um, because in the the um, vegan Caesar dressing. Of course, we're not using anchovies. Oh, I, could, I could be. A, I could be a look. I could a be hand a, model. A hand model. <laughs> Here, I should be doing it like you this. You should do it like that. Okay. All right. Enough. So, um, so this is giving. This is replacing the the flavor profile that the anchovies give us in the Caesar dressing. So, and most health food stores have these. You'll find them in the Asian food aisle, um, wherever you're shopping, whether it's a health food store or Sprouts or Whole Foods, or um, maybe you have an Asian market close to you. Now, somebody asked me if they could just use um, the, um, oh, I lost it, the, the kelp <laughs> um, used in sushi. What's the thing used in sushi? Nori sheets. Nori sheets, yeah. And you probably could, I just don't know how much, so start small. Um, you probably could use some crumbled up nori sheet um, instead of this. But this is the ingredient that's in that. Caesar dressing. Tom, how do you adjust this grinder? They want to know. The, 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 on the side is the, the little... Oh, the, Not the, on this the knob one. on top. The, the knob on top, yeah. that's right. It's the knob on top adjust how coarse or fine yeah. it's going to be. Yes. Right. And now that I have mine set, I try to leave it there. And oh, Mary it. Jo's asking um, what our topic is going to be at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Yeah, so today, oh, I dropped a tomato on the floor. Um, I don't know about you guys, I'm a really messy cook, and so when I get done with the batch prepping, I have to clean the floor. I just, I don't know how I do it, but I seem to get food everywhere. Um, so today's topic, I'm actually going to talk about, you know, different products that we like. I shouldn't say I, we are going to talk about different products that we like. I'm going to show you some, what I call convenience type items that are still relatively healthy that we use uh, pantry um, items pantry items yeah, not so much gadget oriented more like no food. no food. food food items we're going to be talking about food food items so i'm going to show you guys i know that not everything will be available to everyone everywhere you live but um it'll give you some ideas hopefully of what you could look for yeah, so earlier do you we want had me somebody to... from copenhagen they might was on here earlier oh, they might not cool. we might not have all the same stores huh? so i need to move this do you want me to move yeah, it I'll or it. do you want to move it okay i'll i'll just slide it forward just so we can get that out of the way so yeah so that's what we're going to be talking about today i'll show you some things that that i buy that um help us you know when things are really busy and you know, I'm all about saving time in the kitchen. Although I love to eat healthy and I don't mind cooking, I just don't want to spend all my time in the kitchen. I just, you know, I have lots of other things that I want to do and so I want the freedom to do that. I don't want to be, you know, cooking dinner from 3 o'clock till 5.30. 20 and, second countdown. Okay, it, they look like they're about done. So I think we're doing, I think we're doing really good. So yeah, so um, Misty Blue says, I'm looking forward to that topic. Great, thank you. Um, so Jesse's gotta leave to go moderate Chef AJ's channel. We'll see you later, Jesse. Thanks for popping in and helping us. We appreciate it. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. Okay, here they are, you guys. Oh, we gotta come see. Come see. We wanna see too. Aren't they pretty? Yeah. They're so good. So, it's usually better if you can leave them on the, um, the mat 
for a, a few minutes to cool down. They, in the air fryer, they'll ooze some of their wonderful sweet juices. And so they'll stick a little bit to the, um, to the air fryer rack. And I should tell you, I have an extra little um, mat on here. It's called a grill mat. And we have those on our Amazon store. They come three to um, a package. And should I grab the package and show them? No, no it's okay. It's they, okay. Yeah. And so, and you, and they're bigger, and you just cut them to fit whatever, um, you know, uh, rack that you're yeah. using. Just tell them that they're actually in with the appliances because they're next to the Breville. Okay, so they're in with the appliances on our Amazon page, the small kitchen appliances. If you click on that, then he has them in there by the Breville. So that because we use them with the Breville, but we also cut one to fit our Ninja Air Foodie Pro Air Fryer. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Um, and so. Um, so if you if you search on YouTube, Nutmeg Notebook, uh, Breville, uh, Breville uh, Smart Oven Air, then the, that video will come up where we right. compare the two and we talk about cutting that mat for each. Okay. Of them. So see, this one wanted to stick when we first brought them out. And so then I just um, put them in my salad. So sometimes you guys, if we're, well, back when we were meeting friends at vegan restaurants, I would um, make these, I would make like a whole couple pans of them. And then we would um, meet up with our friends at a vegan restaurant where we could get a really beautiful, fresh, organic salad. And then I would, um, take a whole pan of these or a whole container of these with us and share them with everyone. And we would add, we would order our salads. So that's why they always invited us to those things. <laughs> and then I would add, I would add this to my salad. There you go. So that is how Can I... Can you center it up for me here? You're... Okay, let me pull this away because this is hot. So let me pull that away. How's that? That's better. Otherwise, otherwise the angle gets weird. Okay. It's, beautiful. it's beautiful. And so then you could either add one of our salad dressings, the creamy balsamic, the vegan Caesar, the vegan ranch, um, or a flavored balsamic, or if you like just plain balsamic, it would be good. Like a lemon balsamic is really delicious with this and um, th this is my lunch. Now what happens when you actually eat this? What do you mean? What happens? What happens next? Oh, so well I want to take a picture of it so I'm not going to stir it. But what I normally do is I just, I'll put my dressing on it and then I will stir it all together and um, eat it. And then I'll usually... And do you eat it out of that bowl? I don't eat it out of this bowl. I will either pack it back into this container um, especially if we're if we're taking it with us in our cooler, or I'll use. Let me give, grab this bowl. Or our salads fit beautifully in these two quart Corel bowls. So we have these on our Amazon page as well. So, you know, it's supposed to be a serving bowl. <laughs> Which is, you know, it's one serving for us. That's it's right. one it's, serving for us. Um, yeah, it's a serving bowl. Um, and do you eat that whole salad? And I eat the whole salad all by myself. I do because it's so delicious and nutritious and mostly it, water. And it's mostly water, fiber, and water, and it fills me up. And so I'm getting plenty of protein because protein is not a, a separate food group. There is protein in all of the plants that we eat. Some have more protein than others. So of course the legumes have a lot of protein, but even the seeds that we have on the um, everything bagel seasoning croutons that has protein in it. Apple has a little bit of protein. So this is very filling. You always want to be sure that you add starch to your salads because that's where we're getting our energy from. We need the glucose that's in those um, complex carbohydrates in order to give us our energy. 
So, uh, so whatever kind of starch you like, whether it's corn or it's a, a whole grain like brown rice or oat groats or millet or um, quinoa, potatoes, whatever you like, add that to it, legumes. Um, and like this one, I don't even need beans because the potatoes are very filling for me and um, plenty. And I would add these extra croutons too when I go to mix it up. But I only, you know, when I'm taking a picture of it for Instagram and Facebook, then, you know, this is, this is what it looks like. But I would absolutely eat these extra um, croutons unless I have to share them with Tom. Yes. A couple of questions. Um, would it work to, from TS? Would it uh, work to make the sweet potato in the oven if they're not pre-cooked? You, you would need to pre-cook them first. Yeah, for these especially, you need to pre-cook um, them. And I'll tell you that any kind of potato tastes better when it has been baked and then chilled in the refrigerator because it changes the starch and it just tastes. 10 times better. And so go ahead and bake your sweet potatoes, put them in the refrigerator and chill them. And I like to keep them in open containers because that keeps them from getting soggy. And I like to stand them up in the containers. That way the weight of the potatoes on top is not smashing the potatoes on the bottom and they will just stay more, the skin will stay more dry and then take them out. They're so easy to cut once they've been chilled and they'll retain their shape. We like french fries made out of the pre-baked potatoes so much better. We've tried lots of different ways of making things in the air fryer and the cold already um, baked potatoes work the best. You can also cook them in the Instant Pot. A lot of people like to cook them in the Instant Pot. They're a little wet for me that way. I prefer um, the dry method of baking them in the oven myself. But when we travel and we're staying in Airbnbs or hotels, I take my pressure cooker and that's how I cook the potatoes is cook them in the, um, in the pressure cooker uh, and it works fine. But, um, and also if you don't have an air fryer, you can still make these croutons just use your broiler. You just want to watch it so really closely um, so that they don't burn because they go from done to burn in a millisecond. So just be careful about that. Um, so Deb says for roasted garlic she buys the big bags of Christopher Ranch peeled cloves from Costco and roasts them all at the same time. Deb, why didn't I think of that? That is such a great idea. I was looking at that bag when I was there uh, on Friday and I thought there's no way I would be able to use this huge bag of garlic up before it would spoil. So what temperature do you use and how do you do it? Do you do it on a baking sheet? Do you wrap them in foil? Um, how do you do it? Because I usually use the, um, the garlic still all attached and I just like slice off the top or I'll cut it in half and then wrap it in parchment paper and wrap it in foil and then put it in the oven. So that is great. And then she puts them through the food mill to make them smooth uh, and then out in globs, 20 gram globs on a cookie sheet and flash freezes them. That is brilliant. I love that idea. And then you could use that in garlic mashed potatoes or in put it in um, some like mashed squash or oh my goodness, all kinds of things. That sounds amazing. Or you could use it in my salad dressings. I love that. That is brilliant. So thank you, Deb, for sharing that. See, I'm, I learned so much from you guys. It's just amazing. I love it when you share with me in the comments here and on Instagram and Facebook. So, all right, well, it looks like my iPad is on low battery. <laughs> Time to wrap it up and I still have some um, other batch prepping to do and some prepping to do I for our say live. We have, uh, to, I have a announcement letter to get sent out. We have some work we need to we do. We do have some work that and we need lunch. to do. And 
Yeah. I think my lunch is ready. Uh huh. Some of us is, some of our <laughs> some of us I already have our lunches ready. <laughs> well, this is my first meal of the day too. Okay. Because um, once I ate my oats and my blueberries and my banana earlier. Yeah, you had your oh, breakfast. Oh, speaking of which, uh, there was a question way back. The banana. I'm sorry. The, yeah. Um, those were plant. How are plantains different than bananas? Was asked about an hour ago, and I forgot to raise my hand oh, on okay. that. Oh, okay. So a plantain, look them up on, you know, do a, a browser search. So a, I always say Google it, but I know Google is a generic term. term. Yeah. But, um, but look them up and click on images so that you can see, you know, say what's the difference between bananas and plantains. So plantains are, they're in the same family, but they are larger and they are more starchy and they can be used ripe or not ripe. So, um, and they're used a lot in Latin American dishes, and so they go really well, for instance, with um, Mexican food. They're wonderful with Mexican food, and um, they get a little bit sweeter as they ripen, but they are never as sweet to me as bananas. Are. And so they just really lend themselves well to be used um, in a savory way. So they're great with a taco salad. I have three of them ripe right now that I need to, to cook up. Um, and you just, you can either bake them, you can put them in the air fryer. I just find that they get really dried out in the air fryer. So I prefer to brown them in a nonstick skillet and just a few minutes on each side, get them a little bit brown. And our grandkids absolutely love them. They just go nuts over getting plantains. So you can find them in your, um, if you have any uh, Latin American markets, Mexican markets, or stores that cater to the Mexican population, um, they will have them. Whole Foods has them. Um, and they're delicious and wait until they get um, really dark and spotty because that's when um, they just have the best flavor in my opinion unless you're using them like in a stew and Dorena Burton has a wonderful um, Latin American stew recipe that uses them and our family really really likes it so they, it, they go really well with um, like coconut milk and those kind dishes that would use those kinds of ingredients. Anything else, Tom? Um, no, I'm, everybody's just kind of saying thank you and goodbye. And Okay. Uh, well, thank yeah. you guys. This was really fun. Please give me a yeah. thumbs up if you liked this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you're not a subscriber to Nutmeg Notebook, the blog, go over there and subscribe because Tom sends out um, a newsletter once or twice a week and it tells you different things that are going on. It lets you know what we're doing and it's a nice reminder on Sundays for our live show that we do at 4 p.m. Pacific time. So yes, we will be on again later today. I just thought it would be fun to share um, our batch prepping salads this morning. And um, that's all I've got. How about you, Tom? I, I think that's it. So Okay, um, well, I'm going to come over here. Well, you'll be off camera oh, then. Oh, I have to stay over you here? You have to stay over oh, there. Oh, I was going to be there with you. Okay. okay, you guys, thank you so much for joining but, us. We hope to see you this afternoon for the next live show at 4 p.m. Pacific time. And I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom. And we help you get, get healthy and stay healthy. healthy. One, One meal, meal at a time. time. See you later this afternoon. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.